Well, the contenders for the Manchester United February Player of the Month nominees have been named and obviously we're going to discuss about them and how they performed in the eight games i think we've played in february Remember, we played eight games in february meaning that every week been happy we've been playing two games <laughs> that is no no brainer everyone knows about it then we are talking about eric ten Hag finally reveals his plans of either of keeping sabitza and verhoes permanently at manchester united he has gone ahead to tell us whether a decision has been taken. Welcome to United Matters channel. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? This is Rock and David and <clears throat> we are going to talk about Ericsson, his injury update and what Casemiro has gone ahead to talk about the trio <clears throat> of the midfielders that play in that midfield of Manchester United here onto the United Matters channel. Smash like button guys. Don't forget to subscribe because we want to hit 12,000 subscribers and how do you subscribe lower right bottom corner that's the place to be smash the black button that has the word subscribe smashing it hit the notification bell that whenever you get notified every time i upload a video onto this channel now as it stands it looks like Manchester united are really a very good team in the month of february we first played i think against crystal palace then we played Leeds twice we played away at barcelona then we hosted them at Old Trafford and uh, we played uh, we played we played a team called uh, Newcastle on Sunday and I think there must be another fixture I think even Crystal before the Crystal Palace game that means we had played some good games because we ended the month of February and every week we've been playing two games totaling up to you totaling up to these number of games and uh united has gonna has gonna hate to release its list of the you know, of the february play of the month i mean he's casimiro freddy and marcus rashford for casimiro it's evident every time he has been here he has been really marvelous and good especially in what I was going to have to do for the club. I believe that for Casemiro, every month he's supposed to be amongst the nominees. Rashford, with his form, he deserves to be into this. Freddie, with his goal against Barcelona, um, an assist, an assist for Leicester City, the assist for for Barcelona away at Catalonia, then uh, his performances have all been nice. That is Fred Rodriguez for you. And there are only three players put up for nomination and you can go on the Manchester United website and vote for yours. But this time around, I want to be really, I want to be really fair. I think Casemiro deserves it. But I know most people might, might vote in for, for Rashford, but I think it's Casemiro who deserves it, to be fair. Casemiro deserves it. And let's wait and see how those results are going to be released. But when they're released, I'm going to come out and tell you who won it and who exactly had the most number of votes. As far as the fans of United have gone ahead to vote at the website of Manchester United. Leaving that at that, let's jet straight into this big question. You know, we've had lots of stories coming in from Germany about keeping Sabitza at Manchester United, Welt, Verbhaus, and very many others. But this time we've heard it from the horse's mouth who is that eric ten Hag, a man who decides who stays and who leaves these two players are are on loan one came from Bayern munich that is sabitza the other one came in from Burnley, known as world veg horse but they are all doing very very well for manchester united now today ten Hag has gone ahead and revealed to us his plans for these players is he going to keep them or not so ten Hag on whether he wants to keep world veg horse and Marcel Sabitza on permanent deals is said it is much too quick to decide that's it it's much too soon to talk about that first we are in this season and that is where the focus has to be no distractions and I like the way Eric Ten Hag answers these questions because he's really a genius and he knows that when I say something wrong it might create chaos in my dressing room. Thirdly, he wants to keep all his players together with the same mission. The mission is today winning the game against FA, win winning against the game against West Ham and focus. But he's saying it's still so early in the season. But I see all these players staying according to me. Let's start with Sabitza. <clears throat> 
Sabitza <laughs> made his first full debut for Manchester United against Leeds. He played very well. Even away at Leeds, he played very well. He was banned in the game of Barcelona, never played. And he started in the game of Leicester City. He played very well because he was involved in two goals. Then he found himself not playing in the game of Barcelona last Thursday. On Sunday, came up through and we played 25 minutes. In those 25 minutes, he had a shot at goal. And where is Rashford? After that sliding tackle he made at the halfway of the pitch. So, he's playing very well. And those are just... Those are just like 28 days of him at Old Trafford. But we still have March, April, and May. That's it. We still have three months for Sabitza. And he still has a lot to prove. And uh, people will say that, but he never benched him. But he benched him against Barcelona. He's starting, he's, he's starting him ahead of Freddy. I told you the reason as to why he was starting him against Freddy. The game of Barcelona was really important. And he needed to play players who have chemistry together, who have played together, together with themselves. That's it. Now, as it stands, this guy Sabitza is really a very good player. I believe he's better than Fred, but Ten Hag doesn't really hurry to put players into his system before they fit in. Let me bring you up to speed. The most important player talking about last season, he has been declared as the best as the best signing of the summer. That is, uh, that is Casemiro. You remember when did he get his debut? You get. He never played the game of Liverpool over the weekend. We played against Leicester City. He never played. He played. He played like ten minutes in the midweek. We played Sheriff. He played like twenty minutes. Then over the weekend we played Southampton, I think. He played like 10 minutes. Then in the midweek, that's when he got his full start. And then he started to be integrated into the team. And ever since then, the rest has been history. So I believe the integration of Sabitza into the United squad is well managed by Eric Ten Hag. And he was really befelled by bad by bad spell or bad luck that Casemiro got a red card. I believe if at all Sabitza, sorry, if at all Casemiro had not gotten a red card, Sabitza would have found himself in better books of starting the game of Barcelona at Old Trafford and the final of the Carabao Cup because he would have gone ahead to play some good games together with Casemiro. And they played together with Casemiro on Sunday. And we expect him to start today with Casemiro in that down pivot. And with that chemistry growing, Obviously, he's going to come up and really start and start to play very many games because Casemiro gives you license to go ahead and there is nothing that Fred does that, that, that Fred does better than Sabitza. Sabitza covers a lot of ground. He's a better pass of the ball. He's a better tackler. He's taller than Fred, meaning that he can win those early duels. He has a shot at goal and he's good at scoring goals. He's almost molded in the same picture like of Ericsson, but a more, a more aggressive, tenacious, and hardworking player and tackler than who? Than Christian Ericsson. That's it. So, my mind tells me down, runs down in my mind, that Sabitza is going to stay at Manchester United. Let's talk about Wout Weghorst. For Wout Weghorst, I've always told you, Eric Ten Hag demanded for three strikers ever since this season started. With the scenario, with the structure in which we are right now, as Manchester United, <clears throat> we can't spend money on two world-class strikers, meaning that we already have two, we need one. That means Martial is staying and, and uh, Wout Weghorst is going to stay. Burnley was going to pay 10 million euros, sorry, Besiktas was going to pay 10 million euros to keep Welt Veghorst permanently in the summer, meaning that even United will have to pay that amount of money if at all they want, if at all they want to get in Welt Veghorst on a permanent deal. But he'll need him because Veghorst has shown us that the more the more Ten Hag is integrating him into this team and getting partnerships with Rashford, as you saw in the second goal we scored at Wembley in the Carabao Cup finale. 
Veghorst is becoming a very good, good player. Very, very good player and really, and really important because he's a viable, not injury prone, and he is there every time the manager calls him. So he's a viable, so we need him at this club. We don't want to see him go anywhere. We want him at this club. And if we bring in Victor Oshman, we'll be having three strikers. And that's what the manager really says. That you cannot have two world-class strikers at the same time. You need to be having these strikers when you know that maybe Oshman, Marshall, Welt Veghorst. That's it. And you can balance their playing time and rotation in a very good manner. That's it. Then... <clears throat> Veghorst and Sabitza, I think Eric, Eric Renard can't, re, can't reveal it right now, but it's all in a glass that these players are going to stay. One, he wants to prepare for his preseason earlier. He doesn't want to go on and really take long to have players because he knows that if he's to go on to demand for midfielder immediately, he's not going to get immediately. With the situation of the takeover of the club, it's really going to go ahead and really disturb him. So I believe these two are really going to stay. And for vague host, I believe that it's really something that is written all over. Sorry, with Sabitza, I think he's going to be kept by the club of Manchester United because he's on the cheap. Getting a play of a quality of Sabitza at 20 million pounds. I've seen people talk about his wage. The reason as to why he's earning 200,000 pounds at at Bayern Munich was simple. He was bought when his contract was left with just one year, meaning that they got him on the cheap, so they had to give him a lot of money. That's it. But this time around, it's going to be negotiable, and I think he can fit into the salary scale of Manchester United. And why not give him £200,000 when there are players that are really earning it like Harry Maguire, and they are on the bench not playing the game of football? Because he deserves it. He's a quality player. He has a winning mentality, and he puts his board on the line, and is ever fit. He doesn't have a bad injury record. Why not give him that money if at all he has gone ahead to perform well in the remaining three months of the season at Manchester United? Then Ten Hag was asked again if it's fair for people to talk about multiple trophies. He said, we don't have to talk about trophies. We can talk about West Ham United because that is the game today. And he's so much on point about this, trying to tell Freddie and Voghost that talking about the quadruple and running for trophies is not the talk. It's all about talking about the match we are playing today. But I think he just wants us to focus on that. But I know the talk in the dressing room is different. It's different. It's all about the three trophies. Premier League, Carabao Cup, and the UEFA Europa... No, sorry, FA Cup, Premier League, and the UEFA Europa League. <laughs> that is a team known as United. And they are showing us that their aim is on that. Though can't come out and really say that it's that, but he has already come out and said you want to win every game, meaning that if I told you want to win every game, that means you want to win every trophy. Then, for the Anton Martial situation, because it's not available again today as we play West Ham, Ten Hag said, let's give, let's, let's give him the time and we will see when he is back. Then we will be happy because we have a quality option extra for the option of the season. Sorry, for the rest of the season. So, for Anton Martial... I believe we might see him back after the international break, all not, all towards the international break because Ten Hag and the medical team have really gotten to know that we don't need to, re we don't need to hurry him back. Let's wait and see him fully fit and let him return. Reason being, every time they've tried to bring him back, he has gone ahead to get injured and is getting different injuries. Ten Hag also said Martial is playing at that level but is unfit. How is it going to be when he's fit? But the big question is, will he ever become fit? That is the big question that all of us are asking and wanting to know whether this man will ever become fit at the club of Manchester United. So as it stands, it looks like United are really having a very good time. And the coming in of our Virgo host has really done a lot of good to us that he's trying to be a player that everyone never expected to be after that two th those three those two three games he played for Manchester United but he has found himself with two assists and one goal and I think more goals are going to come in for World Vegas as Anton Martial prepares himself to return. After that Ericsson 
who was who was injured by Ande Caro in the FA Cup tie. He has gone ahead and really talked to us about how he feels, and um, he said this to Manchester United TV that it is always boring to be in the boots and to be on clutches, but I have left the clutches and I'm now only in the boots. And next week that should be gone, then finally start learning to walk. But it feels good. So there is some injury progress of Christian Eriksen. He really wants he really wants to he really wants to to get back and he just wants to find himself back onto the field and it's going to take him some time to get back but if at all he starts he's off the clutches starts walking then he takes off the protective boot that means we might see him back mid april or towards the end of april and it's going to help us because if we're having the midfield sabitza ericsson freddy scott mctominy casimiro that's the competition we love to have at the club because quality complements quality and you would love that quality to be back to see itself integrate with Sabitza, Casimiro, Freddy and so much more and Bruno Fernandes at the club. Then Casimiro has also had to say about the following players that he plays with them in field three of Manchester United. In his own words, Casimiro had to commend the following players. Christian Eriksen is an exceptional player. Fredinho or Freddy, another great player. Then there is Bruno Fernandes who plays a bit more up front, a world-class player. So, will one ask me, is Bruno Fernandes a world-class player? I'll tell you, he has attained that status. Ever since he came in here at United in, 2000, in 2020, he has never dropped tools. He has been doing the same things game in, game out. Last season, however much the team was really looking bad, he had... He had a bad spell, but he found himself at least putting in some stats there for United. And this time round, he has exploded and he's back to the Bruno we knew. For Ericsson, exceptional player. That's it, very exceptional, technically gifted. His passing range is a bit out of this world. And him being press resistant and doing that hold up play is really another, another positivity for the club. Freddie. For him, it's the intensity, his, his work rate that he puts out on the field of play, the distance he covers. And when you look at how Ten Hag is going to have to improve him of being composed and shooting with his weak foot, that is the right foot that he shot with. And we got that goal of Barcelona, all against Barcelona, that leveled the game of football in the 46th minute. Again, he passes with it very well. And uh, he just needs to find himself composure in that midfield by not really putting out sloppy passes a lot. And secondly, he should find himself in a position of being able to kick start off performing well in the first half. Most games we've seen Freddy operating well at the second half. That's when he's operating well. But we expect lots and lots of positives from him. So, guys, your thoughts on to Ten Hag revealing Sabitza and Vegho's decision are welcome in the comment section below. Then, tell me or feed me in about Vegho and Sabitza, Casimiro commending Ericsson, Freddy, and Bruno Fernandes, and declaring Bruno Fernandes as world class. And what do you make of the three players nominated? for the Manchester United Player of the Month of February Award, Casimiro, Fred, and Marcus Rashford. Who do you vote for? All that and more into the comment section below. Second video of the day, I sign out for now. See you later. I think the next time we come back, it's going to be the match day live. United versus West Ham, FA Cup tie happening at Old Trafford. May the Lord, may the Lord bless, may the Lord bless you abundantly. I sign up for now. See you later.